Hey everyone, Tom here. Welcome back to Coyote Lane. Today we're going to be uh, cutting some three quarter inch board from some pine cants that I previously cut out of logs. So we're going to throw them on and what I'm going to use that for is for Trina's grooming room that I'm building her. And I need some stuff for the ceiling so we're going to uh, chop that out. I'll show you how I do it on my sawmill and uh, let's let the play time begin. feature I got here is I installed some electric gates with a remote that I got on my tractor. And I love these things because I'm lazy. I don't want to get on and off and open the gates and we got to keep the gates closed because the dogs will get out. So this, is, this has been a nice addition. So cool. circular mill, 52 inch blade, uh, run it with a CAT D318, it has a two cylinder pump motor that starts the main motor, pretty cool engine. I'm going to do a video one day, we're going to fire that all up and uh, I'll show you guys how they did it back at the turn of the century. Actually there's still a lot of these mills going, they're a high production mill, but uh, I bought the bandsaw mill and I don't know, bandsaw is way easier. Uh, for a one-man show like me and I'm not into high production just cutting my own stuff so yeah no it's, it's cool milk So we got our pile of cants over here. Yeah, they're all various sizes, but I don't really care for the ceiling. I'll just match them up or I might trim them up. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, there's some, uh, I cut these about, oh, I don't know, several months ago. So they're not dry, dry by no means, but uh, dry enough to stick up on a ceiling. All right, let's get to it. people ask me um, to show a little more of my setup and how I handled the logs on and off and uh, the waste material the finished boards whatnot so before I start cutting this I'm just gonna run through that 
and how I do it. Um, now keep in mind, I've, I've had my sawmill less than a year. I didn't have a mentor to start out. Uh, so just kind of winging it as we go here and learn it along the way. Thanks to about a hundred thousand YouTube videos I've watched. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to run through that and uh, then we'll get cutting. So first off, um, this is my shed, my sawmill shed. Uh, I built this 100% every piece of wood come off my sawmill. Pretty proud of that. Very gratifying um, when you can put a log on and then end up with a finished product like this. And it didn't cost me a penny. Love it. So yeah, this is a little shed I built. Uh, a young girl, a friend of mine, that I supply some wood to. Uh, she does crafts. She made me this. I uh, I really cherish that. It's pretty cool. Thanks, Jenny. Um, so yeah, this is my HD 36. And this is my little shed. Keep my blades up there. There's my siding maker over there, up against the wall. Just a few little odds and ends, things I need. Uh, you don't need a lot of tools to maintain this. Uh, 9 16 wrench and a couple of allen keys and you're good. So yeah, this is uh, this is what I got in here for a setup. Uh, I do have a digital scale on, on here, if you can see it. Kind of in the way there. And I'll be, uh, I'll explain that later. So yeah, so... <laughs> put the cant on with our grapple this uh, here is my log roller it's uh, 360 degrees swings out of the way I touched on that on the, the other video I'm not going to be using it today because the cants I can easily turn by hand so I really don't need to uh, to use it today so it's just going to sit there idle it won't hurt anything now when I cut the first uh, cuts I take off they come over and they go into this little jig here that I made. So basically what this is, is every, between every slot is 14 inches because that's what I like my firewood. And I just lay the boards in here. The ones that stick out, I just, before I cut, I measure from uh, the last 14 inch, out 14 inches and just put a spray paint mark on it and cut them. I use my, uh, my big 660 with a 36 inch bar. And uh, this, I tell you, this thing is awesome. It uh, makes firewood so fast, it's unbelievable. <laughs> One thing when I uh, when I first bought the mill, I, uh, I had a bit of a fairy tale type scenario in my head about this sawmill, which rightfully so, I love the thing, it's great. But I was thinking about all the cutting I was going to do, but what i didn't realize is that's about 25 percent of the work um you gotta do something with these slab cuts you gotta you know take the lumber off you gotta cut the logs you know you, you gotta stick everything to dry you gotta cover it you gotta make sure so it's it turned into be a way more than i had anticipated one of the big problems i had was the um the waste wood i was cutting it singular and i've got a big pile of it I can show you over here and I was using a sawhorse to cut this but you can see how much I have like I've got tons of it I just loaded with cut wood plus I got lots more out back too but um, so I had to come up with something efficient it it doesn't justify like a wood processor or anything like that this is basically free free firewood for me so I had to come up with something I was thinking of a buzzsaw but even so that's another equipment purchase uh, more money so I come up with this here and this thing works fantastic and I will uh, I will do a demonstration video of it but that's what I do with my waste stuff so then I just so I don't have mess around here because this is basically the sawmills in my backyard even though I have a 25 acre farm uh, I got it here because I want it to be, this is sort of like my main area here. I want it to be uh, all in one spot. So to keep the mess down, once this is full, I take it out back, I cut it and then uh, stack it and it works fantastic. 
Now the the thing with the way I've got my sawmill set up is I have to load the logs from one side because um, I have no room over there. I've got my little tiki bar that uh, I hang out and visitors hang out and watch me or visit or whatever. I got my garden in the background there. So yeah, and this is why I developed the grapple system, uh, which that thing is. I just love playing with that. That thing's awesome. I'm, I'm like a kid with a Tonka toy. Anyhow, so the, yeah, so all my finished product comes off of this side. And then we stack it out here. As you can see, I'm cutting a bunch of 6 by 6s for fence posts. I want to replace all our fences, which I don't know if you guys can see. But I need 130 of them in order to cover all my fence lines. But uh, we'll work at that project. So then over here, um, oh, I'll show you how I store my chainsaws. I, uh, I store my chainsaws here. That's uh, my 170, my uh, 460, and my 660 with a 36 inch bar, 24 inch bar on my uh, 440 or 460. Um, <coughs> I can't leave saws laying around on the ground because uh, we breed Bernese Mountain Dogs. And if they happen to jump over and catch their leg on a blade, well, there goes a vet bill that I don't need. So, not to mention, I like to keep them up out of the way and tidy. But I needed a way that was easy to get these chainsaws in and out. So, what I did was I mounted rollers. I don't know if you can see. See this roller right here? I put one there, there's one on the bottom, and there's one here. Yeah, so all you do is you just pull back a little bit, it comes past that first roller. And now you can teeter tot it like this, so you don't have to pull way up and out to try to get that blade on there. We have to do that every time. Try and pull that like that. No. So what we do is when I'm done, I come up here. Those are plastic spacers, so they don't uh, bother the blade at all. We just roll it in. Boom, like that. This guy, same type of thing. Out. Roll it back. And that's my chainsaw holder thingamajiggy. I don't know what to call it, but I like it. Nobody trips over them and gets cut or they're laying around. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, this is my garden area out here. This is Lucifer. He guards my chainsaws so nobody uh, so nobody steals them. I uh, I mess around with some chainsaw carving, which I'll do some videos on that. But this is a guy I made last winter. It's a fun project. And then this is our little bar area here. I got a sink here um, for the garden, so we can clean vegetables up, or if I want to wash my hands or whatever. And it's a nice place just to sit. If people come over, I don't drink, but if they would like a cocktail, we have a bar area. So that's basically my setup. Oh, um, and then the pieces that I cut that need to be resawn go on these sawhorses. So that when I'm done the log, I flip them all back on, cut them, waste parts go over here, finish go over here, and then we're done. So that's basically my setup. So I'm going to get the mill fired up and we'll get cutting these and I'll show you how I take them on and off without having to touch them. Alrighty.
if you noticed, I didn't touch a board the whole time I did that. I used the grapple to put the cans on. I just kept slicing through all the way down, which you can see I got about nine boards there. And I just kept slice, 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 slice. And then use the grapple, pick the whole stack up, take it back off. Now, if I was storing this and not using it right away, I would obviously stick it. Um, but this drastically cuts down how much you got to handle this uh, this lumber. So I think I got a pretty good system. Yeah. So just to recap, that's basically how I uh, how I mill logs. Uh, I like to take the log anything 16 inches and under. I like to right away get it into a can. Um, it gets the bark off and it's not touching the ground, get it stick, get it up. It's not gonna dry really fast that way, but when I do wanna cut some lumber out, uh, as you can see, I can bring the cans up. I don't have to touch a thing. Um, put it on with the grapple, slice it, put it back off, take it back off with the grapple. Um, it's really, really fast to uh, make lumber. The bigger logs, um, I like to quarter saw those. So I leave them intact. If I'm gonna store the log for a long time, I try and get the bark off uh, if I can, because it stops the insects and whatnot. But um, yeah, so I hope this has helped somebody um, or inspired somebody. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the like button, subscribe. I'm new to this. I'm having a ton of fun doing it. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And uh, watch for my next video. Thanks for watching.